not real, it's not sustainable, it's just wasting time. So we can't do that here. What we do here is we've got to say, whatever we agree here has to be sustainable. That may not be easy for us, but we can live by every single time, and we are committed to living by every single time, and what we agree will have huge impact. We're not just going to make things up that are nice to have, it has to have the impact. And then we have to, this is the tough bit right now, this is the toughest bit, no question. But it's achievable if you put the right parameters in place. Can we see the importance of doing that? And it's not, this has to be clear, and it has to be athlete and coach agree, not just coach trying to force it on them. But it's this bit that makes it. So who's going to keep that alive? Who must keep that alive? Whose responsibility? The correct answer is? What? Everyone yeah. is the right answer. It's not about just coach, it's about coach and athletes. And they need to hold you accountable for this as well. Because you're only human, you can forget about stuff, so it's up to them, and you need to have that tight relationship to build with them and go, it's okay to challenge coach. I want you to. I'm giving you permission to challenge me based on what we agree. Because I need that, I need that support. Like, I'm gonna do the same with you. That's a two-way thing like that. What's the only difference between you and the athlete in reality? In reality, you know, not about this, just in reality, what's the difference between you and the athlete? A bit too strong. Yeah, yeah, possibly. <laughs> but you, they're, they're, they're the people that are playing. <laughs> I know, I was just, I'm looking at Ali there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the key difference is they're the people that are playing the game, and you're the person that has the technical and tactical <coughs> knowledge base that can help them become better. This stuff is, is what is going to help us pass that across so they can do it without the need for us. So that's, that's the only defining, everything else is the same. The way we communicate, we, have, we are role models, we facilitate this, we agree, we challenge each other, we support each other because we all have the same goal, to be the best we can in every single moment. We are all pursuing excellence and we need each other to help in order to facilitate that change because change is tough. And that's why whatever we commit here, we need to be saying this is an every time thing here. Not just for a week, a month, a year, this is from now on. So the whole season, this has to be critical, based on behaviours first. And that's when it becomes tough, but it's worthwhile. So we can see this is where it links in here. So forget the crazy words if they look a bit crazy to you. All we're saying here is we know if we're changing a behaviour, a habit, it is tough. So when we stop thinking about a new skill or a new behaviour, what happens? Yeah, you revert back to your old way. So we can't just think, oh, we've got it in place, it's going to happen. The first session, it might happen. We've got to make sure that we need to put strategies in place here. And through repetition, we get to this place where it's generally there, but there's some things under certain pressures <coughs> or scenarios that might regress. We can put a little step check, check and we're back in again. And we want to get to a point where under pressure, in a match, the toughest match, that's what we're naturally doing. That's the way our athletes are naturally thinking, choosing, working together. It's, it's without thinking that's what they're doing. And it takes time. In my experience, it takes about seven months to make <coughs> the behaviors we're talking about now autonomous. About seven months. About seven months of us being relentless. Now, to here. Now, you can have seven months of them doing it every single time. Why? Because we're supporting the other and we've got strategies <coughs> in place to make it happen. But for them under pressure just to do it without us having this and them to say anything, in my experience, it takes that long. So we need to be prepared. This is not a two, four week thing. I've got to keep it alive and keep my eye on it. You've got at least seven months of keeping your eye on it. But what will happen is the athletes will start owning it and they'll start holding each other accountable. There'll be a lot less unacceptables. And if it is, they'll check it quick and get back into acceptable very, very quick. But that's the journey we need to understand we need to go on. Now that connects with some of your technical and tactical as well, by the way. So with traditional coaching, what really shocks me is when you introduce something new they kind of do it because you're telling them what to do, and then the coach, I'm not saying you guys do this, it's just what I've seen, then the coach ticks that box, goes, oh, we can do that, and then the next session they move on to new content. So what do you think I asked the coach to do? Review it on the next session. Well, I ask, I ask him on the next session just to throw it in a scenario where they have to use that thing he said they can do and don't say anything before and just observe and see how effective it is. And what do you think generally happens 99.9% .9 of the time? They, yeah, can't they, can't do it. Do it. they can't do it because we haven't got to a point where they can recall it and apply it without the need for a coach intervention the reality is it's not real this is why in matches they don't do what you ask them to do because we haven't spent enough time 
driving it through here under pressures where based on scenario they can go okay it's this we do now bam bam bang and they go into that routine with those parameters of the tactical because we have, we, we, we've been false we've, they've done it because we've really supervised them to do it but we haven't got to a point have they done it long often enough where I'm not saying anything or reminding them or talking about it beforehand have I then made training nasty so are you five on five and you're going right I want you to get into them you know what they're trying to do so let's split right you guys know what they're trying to do try and break it down and I'll be looking at you and challenge each size non-negotiables and then see if it's effective then you can have your tick but if you're not doing that you haven't earned the tick so you still need to be asking yourself is it effective or not have we covered this often enough so we're back to we can't just do it here and then move on to the next bit of content because it's not real it's not working have you sometimes experienced that in matches where you're thinking we've worked on this they did it in training but they can't do it now so yeah. it's not unusual as a famous singer once said so we're asking just to make these connected to change so the give permission is saying i'm giving you permission to do these things I'm giving you permission to challenge me. I'm giving you permission, if you don't understand, to go coach or don't understand. But I'm only allowing you to say you don't understand with me if you challenge other players to help you better understand, because I want you to see if you can work it out through there. So it's all these things. That's be patient, relentless. The objectivity. So what we're saying is we're reviewing only what we've said is critical for this session. So this is a tough thing for coaches. We might see five, six, seven different things going on, and the critical outcome for the session might have been transition and a certain part of transition. And all of a sudden when they come in, we start talking about stuff that isn't relevant to what we're working on. That is unacceptable using these principles. You can note it, but, and we don't allow the athletes to also <coughs> review stuff that isn't critical to what we said was, was success framework of the session. Why? Why? We've got a team. Sorry, I'm sorry over there, sorry. Sorry, because it's not necessarily applicable to the concept. Yeah, so if they're talking about that, what are they not talking about? So we want to reduce that time with them talking, we want them to play, so their mind's in the wrong place right now. So if we want them to learn to effectively review, we're asking them to review the relevancy of what we're working on, nothing else. So that's challenging for us as well, right? Because sometimes we start discussing stuff that isn't actual relevant to the very thing we're working on because we've seen other stuff. And all of a sudden now we're confusing the athletes because we're saying five, six different things as opposed to keeping it simple and then hang on, remind me what you said success was. So we must have to make that clear at the beginning. Remind me what you said acceptable and acceptable was. Okay, review that. But where are we now? Now they're relevant, now they're in here. Okay, so what do you need to change for anything? Great, show me. You go. It's simple, it allows them to focus on the very things we want them to work on. And that, that's a quite a shift for some coaches, it's very challenging. You can note it and think, hang on, that's not as good as it should be. And you might want to put it into another part of play or adapt your session for the next time. But in that relevant moment, it is not relevant, so we don't talk about it. And we don't want the athletes to talk about it. We don't want them to generalise. It has to be relevant, critical. Can we see how important that is? <coughs> We're happy with the behaviour first, and again, looking for both. I'm not saying ignore the things that are unacceptable. We still need to challenge them as well. But if it's a positive shift, we need to make sure there's recognition. They need to be aware. Do I know they're aware of it? I'm not taking for granted. And then this is that 24 weeks that I spoke about. We're happy in the self-review, which we'll go into later. That's why I'm clicking through these. So this will happen. So we know people have got learnt answers. They'll try and waffle. We know people will try and just take those easy shortcuts. Hold them accountable. But we'll use the rule of three, which I showed you before, where we're going to drive other athletes to hold other athletes accountable not relying on us to do it, we're the last resort. And that's them driving their own behaviours. And us being role models. So this is a key thing. We spoke about it already, but this is massive for me. We need to establish our own baseline as coach. Our own coach behaviours. What are we doing well? What are we doing consistently? What are we doing inconsistently? What are we changing when the pressure's on us? What do we need to change? We need to film ourselves often. We need to start looking at the video of us coaching not just the play how we communicate what's going on how engaged are the athletes in front of me if they're not what am i doing about that what am i changing all these things and it's back to how often does that happen how often do you really do that i'd suggest initially you need to be filming every single session 
So you forget it's there, so you become you again. And your athletes forget it's there, they become real again. If you just do it now and again, you'll be a bit false, they'll be a bit false, it won't be real. And what you'll do then is you'll pick up trends. So you can start seeing, that was a really good session, what did I do differently? That was an horrendous session. How influential was I? Was a part of the problem or part of the solution? You can start picking up on certain trends. And the other thing is, both training and competition. You really need to be filming yourself in competition. You can see where are your shifts. And my shifting now in my behaviours are the difference. Now, I know from my experience, as basketball coaches, you're respectfully, you're some of the worst for that I've seen in sport. Some of you are crazy Tasmanian devils in matches. I mean, it's amazing. I and mean, I've seen it, don't get me wrong, I've seen it in other sports, but it seems like maybe because you've got the timeouts and you're right on the side of the court, you're emotionally involved, it becomes pretty alive for you. But I've, I have seen it more in your sport than a lot. I'm not saying it doesn't happen in other sports. Now, how much do you think, here's a question for you, how much do you think that is part of when you were growing up as players and you watched TV, you saw that as part of the role of the coach? And how much did the audience expect that of you, that actually... If a coach just sat down and was cool, that's not him, he's not passionate enough, he's not, he doesn't want the team to win as much. How much of that do you think is, an, is part of you doing that? To be fair, a basketball coach has got the most control of potentially any coach. Oh, because of your timeouts, yeah, yeah. You know, timeouts. You're, so you're so close to the game anyway. Yeah. You, you, can, you, can can you know, so you are going to relate to <coughs> them being more involved either in the right way or the wrong way. And the right way is fantastic. Yeah. Just the other way. Yeah. I'm guilty of both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's that's the thing, because it, it's for me, you know, that there's a are you having a positive impact or are you having a negative impact? And these are the